So in this series, as we are just going through the expected questions which might be asked in the NEET PG2025 or FMG2025, so I bring up some more questions which are very, very important. Now, this is the question from ANT, and the question reads as this. A child is brought to the community medicine clinic with his worried parents. Most likely defect is as a result of. So in here, this is the figure which you have to just recognize over here and as far as this figure is concerned, it shows a defect in the arrow, uh, which is uh, shown by the arrow. And the question reads, options are failure of endoderm, defect in maxillary fusion, defect in fusion of mandibular process, neural crest migration defect. So you have to arrive at the most precise and the most accurate answer. Now, you know that I will again go that there are certain important topics which you cannot afford to miss. And among the important topics is embryological malformations, the uh, abnormal ab aversions in the embryological development. And as far as the question which tops the agenda is the cleft lip and the cleft palate. And cleft lip and cleft palate is a common congenital problem. And it is more important than that is that it is uh, important question frequently asked so you have to remember the embryogenesis of the palate embryogenesis of the lip as you can see over here now you know there is this the lower jaw and there is the upper part of the uh, uh, mouth and this upper part of the mouth develops upper part of the mouth or the face develops from the maxillary process and this develops from the mandibular process as you can simply see in this figure the lower part or the lower jaw is normal but the defect lies in this part the upper half and this half develops just from the maxillary process very important so a simple conceptual question this is the maxillary bone these are the maxillary processes which give rise to the upper part of the face and if you have this concept simply this is the cleft lip on the upper part so over here failure of endoderm the endoderm ectoderm mesoderm they are the germ layers but over here they will be far away the options what are derivatives of these layers coming to the defect in the uh, maxillary process i guess having a look at the figure this is the correct answer Def defect in the fusion of the mandibular process would cause a defect over here not here so this would be the defect of the mandibular process so lower cleft lip would be the result of a defective fusion of mandibular processes neural crust migration disorders they are a different set of disorders and they belong to a group of disorders called as crystopathies that is a subject for neat ss super specialty but over here you have to remember in that disorder there come the diseases like the her springs disease failure of neural crust cells to migrate to certain areas or the pharyngeal arch defects but over here this is a simple question and this is a question which drives a simple answer the concept so failure of fusion of maxillary processes that is the correct answer now this question from surgery we're moving from uh, one subject to the other uh, because the questions come in a random manner so we're acclimatizing you to the exactly the environment of the neat pg or the fmg now it reads as cxr cxr means chest radiograph you have to be well aware of the important terminologies which are there shows cannonball metastasis they are usually associated with now chest x-ray over here these are metastatic lesions in one lung and these are the metastatic lesions in the right lung this is the right lung this is the left lung and here are you can see the cannonball shadows the question itself signifies you did not uh, arrive at the diagnosis by looking at the radiograph adrenal adenoma renal cell carcinoma tuberculosis and sarcoidosis are the four options given now as far as this cannonball metastasis are concerned you should be well aware of the osteoclastic metastasis, osteosclerotic metastasis, and what are the important tumors? This is an oncology question, and what are the important tumors? Now, 
adrenal adenoma. Adenoma is a benign condition. Why should it be associated with malignancies, with metastatic spread? So adenoma would be the least likely possibility. Uh, I go by the process of exclusion, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis causes different lesions, the primary lesion, the secondary lesion, or sometimes the miliary tuberculosis, but they would be millet seed like, uh, I mean to say, lesions, not cannonball metastasis. So, tuberculosis will not be an option with cannonball metastasis. Sarcoidosis, no, the sarcoid lung presents entirely differently with something like potato nodes, uh, bihylar lymphadenopathy, and other uh, features, but not characteristic. This is a classical question asking or uh, testing you to remember certain important features. Cannonball metastases are a characteristic feature of renal cell carcinoma. Renal cell carcinoma has got certain important features that it uh, has got a metastatic spread and it usually just causes renal vein thrombosis as well and the RCCs have got a huge potential to go into the different areas, the lungs, the brain. But important is that this is very characteristic that they just go and produce cannonball metastasis in the lungs. So this is quite important pathology related question in surgery. So surgical pathology basically tested over here. So that's important. Now, this another question. This is a question from medicine. CT scan of a patient shows benign tumors. So you have to go through the question line, arrive at the uh, answer by reading the question. Involving cells of the myelin that surround the cranial nerve 8. Important. In a patient who is diagnosed to have neurofibromatosis, most likely tumor is pituitary schwannoma cerebellar tumor prolactinoma. Now, If you give this uh, scan to the radiologist, you will be seeing that these are bilateral tumors. These are two tumors present over here. And now I will, uh, that would be uh, the answer by an expert, but not by a neat PG student. How does a neat PG student come to arrive at this diagnosis or the answer? Benign tumors, neurofibromatosis, cranial nerve eight. Very simple, for a good student, simple. You know, acoustic neuroma or the schwannoma, they are B9 tumors which usually lie within the vicinity of the eighth, the vestibular cochlear nerve, especially the vestibular division of the eighth cranial nerve. And pituitary tumor would be, would be in the form of a pituitary fossa, a tumor, a mass occupying the pituitary fossa. The cerebellar tumor would be in the hindbrain and that would be in this region over here. So this is uh, not in the cerebellar region. Prolactinoma again in the region of pituitary but then it would be having uh, some other characteristics shown uh, like amenorrhea, galacturia, uh, other features. But over here I think the most likely possibility is the schwannoma. And schwannoma, why? Because schwannomas, as I told you, are usually clustered around the eighth cranial nerve. They are benign and they involve the cells of the myelin sheath. And very, very important, this term, the neurofibromatosis. Neurofibromatosis is characteristically associated with schwannomas, not with the other tumors as shown over here. So this is very important how to and schwannomas are quite likely asked in other forms as well so this is important now this is a question from pediatrics a four-year-old presents with a palpable abdominal mass and other findings include abdominal pain hematuria fever anorexia nausea and vomiting most likely condition as shown in the figure so over here the figure is shown and this is the region of the renal area, the kidneys. Pyloric stenosis, Wilms tumor, teratoma, angiolipoma. Now, uh, if you go through the history, if you go through the clinical case over here, palpable abdominal mass. Yeah, palpable abdominal mass would be a feature of pyloric stenosis as well. 
patient with present with vomiting and patient with present with uh, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, hematuria. Hematuria is unlikely of a pyloric mass, congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. The pylorous muscle may undergo hypertrophy congenitally and it can cause these symptoms, but not hematuria. Hematuria would not be a feature of uh, this uh, important clinical entity. Angiomyolipoma, again a tumor, unlikely, very rare tumor and not. Teratoma would be having the, I mean to say, clusters of all the germ layers, endoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm, and a component of cartilage, a component of bone, a component of maybe thyroid tissue, a component of other uh, tissues as well. Over here, uh, uh, teratomas uh, are usually seen in the sacrococcygeal region. Sacrococcygeal teratoma congenital. Over here, it is not the sacrococcygeal region. And the most and the best answer, uh, most, uh, I mean to say, likely and the best answer is Wilhelm's tumor. Wilhelm's tumor may present with abdominal pass, which may be noticed or which may undergo unnoticed. And hematuria is a prominent feature. Pure in many cases is a feature. Anorexia, nausea, and vomiting are associated with many conditions, and they, it, they are associated with Wilhelm's tumor as well. So, Wilhelm's tumor, and you can see this is the area of the on the ultrasound, you have to recognize the area, and this is the area of the kidney. Uh, I mean, to say a large mass in the renal area, and that is the Wilhelm's tumor. A most likely better option of option which would be better for, according to me would have been a neuroblastoma if that would have been an option as well. So, but here this is a set of options given there and Wilhelm's tumor is the most likely possibility. Now a question from microbiology. The figure represents laminated membrane of a cyst. So laminated membrane of a cyst with a water lily appearance from a female with right hypochondric pain on cross examining most likely cystis. So this is the image of the cyst wall. H mole, cyst of tinea solium, arachnoid cyst, hydrated cyst. Now, hydrated for mole, female, but this will be presenting with grape-like clusters from the vagina and the and the, I mean to say that the clinical presentation would have been entirely different. Hypochondric pain means the, it, and it is especially the right hypochondric pain. So the right hypochondric is the area of the liver. And in the liver, the right lobe of the liver, predominant lines in the right hypochondric region. So it is something to do with the pathology of the liver. And once liver comes to your mind, the first important thing comes to your mind, especially the right lobe of the liver, is the hydrated cyst. Because 90% of the cysts lie within the right lobe. So I guess arachnoid cyst is not a possibility over here. Because arachnoid, arachnoid space. So this is the right hypochondric. Has nothing to do with the clinical symptomatology. Then cyst of tinea solium. No, they do not present it like uh, like this. The hydrated for a mole, exactly not. So the correct option is the hydrated cyst. And because there are simple, some important clues, water lily appearance, characteristic of hydrated cyst, laminated membrane. So you have got the laminated uh, uh, thing which goes in uh, relation with the hydrated cyst, the water lily appearance. And that also goes in relation with the hydrated cyst and uh, the location, location, which is the right lobe of the liver that also goes in relation to the hydrated cyst and the laminated appearance. So multiple, you can, uh, 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 an examiner cannot give you more clues than this. So this is very important how we arrive at the, so the answer is the hydrated cyst. Uh, basically, the purpose of these uh, lectures or these videos or these small interactions with you is to uh, let you know what are the types of questions answered and how you arrive at the diagnosis. I hope this clarifies your concept a bit and you are expected to get such types of questions more and more in your coming years. And I hope that you complete the examination this year only. This is not for you to um, go through the next year as well because I hope wish you all uh, the students to qualify the examination this year only. So wish you best of luck and thanks for watching.